welcome to the Magic on the Inside podcast by the Sisters Enchanted, where we chat magic, hot topics, personal development, and good old-fashioned life. Brew up something delicious and sit with us for a spell. Hey there, Enchanted Sister, Sarah Walker here, founder of the Sisters Enchanted, and I am here to introduce you to episode two of our Magic on the Inside podcast series where we are talking to everyday witches making everyday magic. In this episode, we are featuring Amanda Osborne of Heathen Moon. Amanda and her partner, Ryan, conjure up amazing magic in Canada via magical tools, uh, ethically reclaimed wood, really amazing things that they have going on there. And I would love for you to listen in as Amanda talks to us about her everyday life and how she makes everyday magic as an everyday witch. All right. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? It's good to see you and hear you. (laughs) It's great to see you. So to anybody who's listening or watching this, this is Amanda Osborne. Uh, She is one of the magic makers behind an amazing company in Canada, Heathen Moon, and also one of our longtime Enchanted Sisters. And Amanda's here as part of our Everyday Witches Making Everyday Magic series on our Magic on the Inside podcast. So again, welcome, Amanda. Amanda. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Yeah. So Amanda, real quick, do you want to give us like an overview of who you are, what, you know, who are the people in your life, the main players, where you are, all that good stuff. Who are you? <laughs> sure. Um, so I live in a small town in the Fraser Valley called Chilliwack. Um, it's like a little off section and it's called Yarrow. And to me, that's like super magical because I love yarrow itself as a plant and an herbal remedy. So that's super awesome. <laughs> um, I am uh, in a partnership with my um, with my also business partner Ryan, and we make magic together in so many different ways. Um, I think we have um, not. I think sorry, we have. Four children. <laughs> I um, thought that's where you were going, and I was like, I'm, "Like, I think you would know." <laughs> yeah. Well, like, so Addison, um, I bore her myself, but I have three bonus children from Ryan's previous um, relationship, so they're they're an added bonus for everything in life. They were definitely meant to be um, mine, and I'm I'm so grateful for for all that they they do for us it's amazing how how much our family is just together and whole so that's amazing in itself um i have a i have a muggle job as well and it is definitely um it is definitely time consuming and energetically consuming um so i try to make as much of my life magical as possible whether it is like how fancy i do my nails (laughs) Or something, um, even something as simple as that, just to remind myself every day when I'm doing non-magical stuff that I'm still at the base, at my core, a magical human being. Awesome. So when did you fall into magic? Was it something that you just always, um, you know, like growing up, you just knew you were like, yeah, I'm a witch. Or was it later? Or what did that look like for you? It was definitely, I've definitely always felt like even as a little kid, um, I was always a keen observer of um, people's energy, how, um, how people, how I felt when people walked into a room. I didn't really know what that was and I didn't know how to articulate it to my mom. Um, So I just kind of observed. And as I grew older, um, my girl, one of my best friends, um, her and I, were um, very much into tarot and um, spirit boards. And we, um, one of my first divination practices was the spirit board. And that was where I feel like I found the need to ground and the need to like really understand what, what I was doing here. So with that came research and all this, you know, um, all this amazing knowledge that's out there and you kind of just build upon 
on that. So it's it's been an, it's been an all life thing. I feel like <laughs> it's, there wasn't any um, pivotal moment. I don't think. I mean, the pivotal moment that comes to my mind it's just just things that I would do um, ritualistically that I really didn't know was you know magical or witchcraft or anything. But um, when Ryan and I first got together a couple like almost three years ago. Um, he was sick one day and I got out some essential oils and he was just, oh, it was awful. <laughs> it was so bad. So I started putting essential oils on his face and his chest and, um, he, he looked at me with like these really sick eyes and it was just like, thank you so much for being my witch. And I was like, oh, there is a, oh yeah. Okay. That makes, that actually makes sense now. And then it just kind of, it evolved from there. And then, yeah, it's just been, it's, it's a forever evolution thing. <laughs> That's super cool. That like, it just took that one moment of like somebody else being like, Hey, I see you. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then all the other stuff made sense then. <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah. um, so that was a question that our audience members wanted to hear was your most memorable magical moment. So it sounds like that's probably up there. Um, was there any, like, since then, any, like, moment where you were just like, oh, I'm so, this is, I'm so supercharged, or, like, um, this yeah. is, this is what feels great? Uh, any, anything that comes to mind for you? Absolutely. Um, this house, I manifested this house for us. Um, I say, I say me, but Brian definitely, his energy had a, had a lot to do with that um, manifestation, but it was um, during Mercury retrograde 2017. It was not the greatest time for us. We were kind of, um, we weren't really sure what we wanted to do with our, our business. Um, and he was um, commuting from Chilliwack to North Vancouver, which is like it might as well be another universe <laughs> during the summer. We were living with his um, with his mom because uh, our landlord um, decided that he wanted to sell and he wanted to sell fast. So we ended up um, moving in with um, with his mom. So it was very we were very cramped and closed, and I did a lot of shadow work that summer. And then we got this the opportunity to 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 see this house, and it took it took a lot for us to even convince the landlords to see us because they had had so many, um, they, had, they had a lot of terrible tenants before us. So they were very weary and they were happy to have this place empty. They didn't really want anybody in. Um, but I, so when I found out, I, we didn't, hadn't seen the inside yet. We had just seen the outside. We just drove by it. And I told, I told Ryan, um, I'm going to back up a little bit. So before, before we found this place, I would, I would be doing the most mundane things. And I would imagine myself um, looking out a kitchen window, looking out at the mountains or how it would feel like the, the water running through my hands, how, how the kids would feel or sound, you know, running up and down the halls. Um, just really like living in that moment of we found that place. And then a few weeks later, so I did that for, I did that for probably like a month and a half straight, just every single mundane thing, putting laundry in the. In I distinctly the, remember you sharing machine. this with us. Mm -hmm. like, I distinctly remember you sharing this yes. with us as you were doing it, like this yes. year, like, at this house. Yeah, it was it was such a huge thing. And then when we finally, and so it was the peak of Mercury retrograde when we finally got to see this place. And I was determined to bury something in this in the lawn. I just knew that's what I had to do. <laughs> um, so I made this beautiful like Mercury retrograde card. And Ryan's Virgo, so Mercury doesn't really affect him that much. Um, like he just kind of he he navigates my turmoil during the season. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Um, so I made this wonderful, like, um, I think I still have it in my purse, actually. Um, I, it's like just a blue card with um, the mercury symbol and then um, a sigil. And I, I knew that I had to bury it in the yard in order to, to bring this house to us. And I forgot to do it because I was so overwhelmed with how much this place was ours when we got in here. 
it was, and they, the landlords just let us come in and like walk around by ourselves. We didn't have to like wait for them or anything. They just kind of like left us to our own devices. And the second that I, so I was in the living room and Ryan went into the kitchen and he kind of went, Hey, babe. And I walked into the, to the kitchen and that was the window that I'd been picturing for, for almost two months, this exact window. And I just, I still get chills. It just, it was so empowering and so magically infusing that that's that's we did this that's what and we still had to fight for it it was not easy <laughs> from that point on it was still it was still not that easy but I just chalked that up to Mercury retrograde because that's <laughs> <we're> here now <laughs> <laughs> oh that's like thank you for sharing that and I love that you shared too that there was like uh, kind of turmoil beforehand and you did all this uh, shadow work and it didn't just your manifesting story it's I think a lot of times when we think about manifesting we envision it as just like I set the crystal grid and bam the thing appeared and that's not typically <laughs> in my experience how yes, that works. Just hard work <laughs> yeah like you're gonna get the the giant you know unexpected bill before the the payoff comes through or something yeah. so thank you for sharing that that like very real experience in your manifesting <laughs> yeah it's like, like really important so um do you have a an, a big oops moment did you ever try anything that like yeah was like um, no. <laughs> and this was this was recently too i um i don't know if we we have these um cauldron starters so they're infused with resin from the tree because it was uprooted um during a windstorm or something and so what happens to the 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 tree itself is all the resin um, flows to the injured area to kind of protect the tree or the area itself. So Ryan, we were looking for wands for for pagan pride, and um, he comes back with this big hulking piece of pine, and it's like it has burls and it's gorgeous it's beautiful and so he's carrying this on the river <laughs> he's determined to take it home so we we found that cutting the st some sticks out of it are amazing cauldron starters just amazing but so i've seen ryan start our ritual fires by like um almost creating like a little cabin you know like stack one stack the other stack one stack the other so I did this in my cauldron, my, my, my like one quart cauldron, and I probably put about six sticks and I almost burned up our whole kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they, they, they ignited really slowly. So I was like, Oh, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to do so much stuff with this. And then there's this um, big blaze, like along our kitchen cabinets and I'm like, oh my god like I couldn't believe I had um and he like looked at the ashes afterwards he was like what exactly what you're thinking like these things this, have oil in them this nice house you manifested you're about to burn down right. <laughs> with, a, with a typical everyday culture and fire nothing to see here <laughs> nothing nothing to see just move along <laughs> move along people um so so you guys, your business, Heathen Moon, uh, it, if I'm if I'm correct, it um, products that you create and you offer align a lot with your magical practice and your kind of brain magic and what you work with. So do you want to share anything about that, like kind of your zone of genius in magic? Sure. Like, so I do. Um, sense of smell is really important to me. So I do. Um, I do all of our essential oil concoctions. I can hear my kids right now. <laughs> <laughs> down the hall. Um, so I do our um, essential oil anointing oils. Um, so a lot of it is um, just intuitively what I would create for my family. And then it turns out that they have like the most amazing metaphysical properties as well. Like the calming, calming oil that I make for my girls because they're – they're going to start their moon their moon cycles pretty quick so i'm just gearing up for that so <laughs> this stuff for the the same oils like melissa and calendula and um chamomile that works for balancing their hormones is also really 
um, amazing for meditative practices or um, or your bath, right? Like that self that self love infusion. Um, so I do all of those, and I've started to do um, sacred salts, which is something I'm super excited about. We had a beautiful Letha fire um, at the at Letha, and I just randomly just said, Brian, can you go get me like a bunch of charcoal from our, our fire pit? And this big bowl of charcoal appeared in front of me and I just started grinding and made the most amazing black salt and just, and stuff that I would use. I would never ever make something that I wouldn't use in my practice. And I think that's what's really important. Um, like when Ryan made his first set of witches runes, everything he makes is usually for me. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, like, this is, this is something, babe. Like, we have to, we have, if you can make, if you can make more of these, we need to try and, you know, see if other people are called to it. Because if I'm excited for it, guaranteed somebody else is going to be excited for it. Yeah. And that's kind of how it happened. Like, our moon shelves. He made it for, for my Mother's Day present. And I honestly couldn't believe how much interest there was. And that's our number one seller right now. It's, it's just amazing. And I add, um, for every order, I always make a, like a little, um, a little oil intended for the person or like a bath salt intended for the person with a ritual or a consecrating, um, a consecrating ritual. Um, and then a little letter as well. Cause I feel like putting that, putting like, he, he does so much of the physical stuff. And he puts so much energy into aligning that, that item energetically that writing the rituals and writing, um, you know, the, the thank you letters is, is just kind of my, that's my take on it. That's, that's yeah. how I contribute to our, to our business. So I love that the offerings you guys have are very much everyday magic also. It's not like, um, sometimes I feel like you can walk into a metaphysical shop or something and you just see all of these things, right? And you're like, when am I going to use this like giant generator situation in my everyday <laughs> life? <laughs> like, like I got kids, I got a job, I got like, yeah. stuff to do. And when am I going to sit down like with this thing? But your stuff is very much um, natural elements and it's like soul and intuitively crafted and it's, it's everyday stuff that you can use pretty you know, like quickly and in your everyday yeah. life and like visually appealing that you can use in your everyday life also, which is. Yeah. And sometimes you just need things that are just going to be set it and forget it. Like you can hang a moon shelf and you can put your tarot cards on it and know that it is being spiritually lifted, <laughs> you know, like that it was, it was created to enhance your practice specifically. It's not just, it's not just a shelf. It's, you know, yeah. something that you can you can use and you can see and it's yeah appealing i'm a libra so things aesthetically pleasing to me is very important <laughs> <laughs> i love the astrology bits so you're, you're like this is how we function as a family as a result of our astrological makeup <laughs> for me astrologically it's uh, astrology is really important to me and i am still not through nick and anna's um mr enchanted and anna's uh <laughs> astrology I'm still not done the first one and I, cause there's so much, there's so much to, to, to think about. And, um, and it's like what it's, it's kind of sometimes hard to like navigate, um, what I already know and then what they're in for Like, it's just like another layer of all the things that I already know. And it's like, my head was going to explode. So I'm so excited to get back to it. Well, taking- level two is going to kick off before too long. And then, um, you know, maybe you could tie it all back in together, which would be cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to take some vacation time just to do it. <laughs> so as a person who has, you have a muggle job, you have kids, you have a partner, you have a business. How do you make time in your daily life for magic? Like what's, what's it look like to you just on a typical day? How do you carve that time out? It's as simple as like, as um, mixing my coffee in a clockwise direction and thinking that this is going to be the best coffee that I've ever had. That is, that is, it is my elixir of life at this point in time. And 
and then it just kind of it kind of folds from there if I'm already in that mindset of even wanting just to make my, my coffee magical then it just it 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 tumbles and flows then I pull cards or I'll bring my cards to my local job and I'll you know on my break I'll just I'll shuffle and pull and shuffle and pull and then a lot of it is um, creating on my own time, like um, on breaks or in between cooking or cleaning or whatever. Um, I'll take breaks to to do my Instagram posts because I do find, um, and you had a lot of, a lot to do with this as well. Um, I think a couple months ago I was struggling with um, what our brand was or um, with like a brand identity, and then I ran over a rabbit. <laughs> and and I wrote this like really heartfelt like today I ran over a rabbit and <laughs> and I shared it to the enchanted journey. What? I've been laughing and I'm like, that's not funny. Why am I laughing? <laughs> I think because I can see the look on your face right now and it's like <laughs> you're like this horrible story, but it leads somewhere good. <laughs> it does, because I I wrote this I wrote this like apology to the rabbit and then I made Ryan go out and get it because I couldn't, I just didn't want it out there. <laughs> and it's just that, like that, those kind of instinctual things. Like I knew that he had to go and get it. He had just had the most awful evening with the kids. I was at my muggle job and it was a Saturday and he had just had the most awful moment with the kids. And I come running in with like almost like I'm almost in tears, but I'm panicking, but I know that something magical is about to happen. So I told him that like, you have to go and get this rabbit. And he went out and got it, or he went out, couldn't find it, came back and then went out again and got it. And then as he was like, as he was, as he was burying the, the rabbit, this amazing barn owl comes and he swoops and just observes him. You know, like she could smell dinner, but she was still just observing him. And it was, he said that it was the most intense moment that he had had in a, like a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, just seeing the magic of every day. Like I, Sometimes, sometimes I do struggle to, to keep a clean house and even just something as ritualistic as sweeping, sweeping the negativity away as you're sweeping the house, mm. you know, it just to infuse magic is really, really easy as long as you have the intention to do so. Right. Yeah. So Very true. You just carve it out when you can. <laughs> yeah. And especially like I said, yeah. um, and I, you've been with us now since I think like basically the very beginning. Yeah. And I remember the first time you, I think, were the first person to like to tag us in an Instagram post. Like, was I the first? Well, to my knowledge, you were the first person to tag us in something on Instagram. And um, I remember being so like excited. I was like, this is this is so cool. And um, and so and I love now that like over like two years later, you are running your own business and you're doing so many cool things and spreading magic around to other people. So it's um, you know, like and imagine two years ago, you I know, know, like what's happened in two years. So when you, I found you and Anna, I was um it was the summer of twenty sixteen. For sure, it was 2016. I know that because we we all in the Sisters Enchanted group we all checked yeah. <laughs> recently. <laughs> and um, I was um, I was I was working a pretty terrible job. I had just lost a really good job um, for energetically terrible reasons, <laughs> um, and I was working this really really crappy. Um, desk job and it was like two hours like it they didn't even take taxes off my paycheck that's how minimum it was um and I remember seeing your uh, the like an ad come up or something and um it was honestly I can say the most one of the most important parts in my magical life for sure was finding the sisters enchanted um, because not only the the growth and the wealth of knowledge that everybody has in the group, it's the willingness to share within the within our community, and it's 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 really really powerful. And I mean, it's it's amazing to to be a part of it for sure. Thank you for saying that. It is. I think it's a special special place on the internet for oh, sure. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, well, before we go, I think we, we still have some time, but I have, um, we're doing this thing, this or that. So I'll run down a list. I'll give you two options. You got to pick one. Okay. Right? And we'll see into your soul by doing a game of this or that. <laughs> Well, right. I'm a Libra, so it might take me like five minutes to like weigh it all out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. There's ten of them. Okay. Uh, runes or tarot? Which is runes for sure for me. It's like a nice balance in between. <laughs> You're already cheating. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so tarot, tarot. Then. You're picking your own answer. <laughs> Um, but no, which I like, which is, we'll, we could take that. Um, okay. Dark or light? Oh, gray. <laughs> Duality is so important. <laughs> okay. If I had to pick though, it would be dark. For sure. There you go. Um, okay. all right. All right. This one's different. Pizza or tacos? Oh, that's hard. Um, you had taco pizza. <laughs> Okay. Um, I would say a pizza, pizza for sure. All right, cats or dogs? Ooh, cats right now. Cats. <laughs> I've been, I've been really, I've been really like wanting a cat for a while, actually. I've got two. I do. I'm a cat person. Um, books or movies? Books. Uh, the ocean or the woods? Woods. Hmm. <laughs> ocean yes i haven't been to the ocean once this summer and i've been really missing it so ocean all right um fall or spring autumn for sure the oh this is a tarot question the tower or the devil uh the tower tower changes are coming um day I have to tell you something really quick oh, okay. I saw a person where uh, with a tattoo and it was a tattoo of the tower card and it said on the bottom um, I'm fine <laughs> <laughs> everything's like fine that should be like like it's like a t-shirt that I wear a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right day or night uh, night um, and I had pizza or tacos down twice. So let me see if I can think of another one off the top of my head. Um, amethyst or citrine? Citrine. <laughs> deer in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> you can't decide. Um, cool. That was it. We, we saw into your soul. You are a person of balance. <laughs> <laughs> We won't play this game again. <laughs> so. um, all right. Well, so Amanda, like I said, she um, is the one of the founders and operators behind Heathen Moon. So you can find Amanda and her partner, Ryan, and all of their amazingness at heathenmoon.ca and on Facebook at Heathen Moon and on Instagram at underscore Heathen Moon underscore. Right. And That's see all of the cool stuff that you're 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 cooking up. Um, we have a, a box of goodies headed our way for um, our Salem trip. Uh, we have a Salem witchy weekend in September coming up, and I am so excited to get that box and rip it open <laughs> and share with the masses all of the good stuff that um, that you guys are conjuring up over there in Heathen Moon. I checked the tracking; it should be there just after the weekend. I'm not sure if USPS. Uh if they ship on the weekends, but it should be there super soon. They do. Awesome. I'm so looking forward to it. So do you have any like last words of advice for a person who is feeling a little less than magical today when they listen to this? Um, go out barefoot into your favorite part of your yard or anywhere that you feel most connected to source or the goddess, gods, energy, universe, and take a piece of rose quartz with you and just kind of just kind of be and connect just making sure that you connect is the is the most important piece of advice i feel i love that so simple so easy and something that anybody can do right away all right well thank you amanda for doing this as part of our everyday which is making everyday magic series and you are definitely making everyday magic over there in your neck of the woods 
Um, all right then. So uh, yeah, check out Amanda and Ryan at heathenmoon.ca. And Amanda is always around too in our Facebook groups. So, you know, say hi to her over there and be sure to follow her on Instagram and on Facebook and um, let her know that you saw her on this podcast or heard her and, and tell her hello. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being with us, Amanda. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the podcast where we talked to Amanda Osborne of Heathen Moon. Make sure to check her out online and let her know you found her here with the Sisters Enchanted. And if you are interested in kicking up the enchantment in your life today, be sure to follow us at thesistersenchanted.com and you can grab a super cool free coloring beginner's witch guide sort of thing at thesistersenchanted.com forward slash color yourself witchy and get your everyday magic kicked up a notch starting today. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you around the internet. Have a magical day.